lintels to the column tops. Stones like these weigh as much as five to ten tons apiece. So how did the ancient Greeks lift such enormous weights to the top of a temple? We know that in ancient Egypt, they used a form of cantilever crane called a shadouf to lift water. And we know that the ancient Greeks used the same principle, but on a much larger scale, to lift weights at the dockside, cargo and even ships. So we can imagine that it's entirely possible that they used the same type of cantilever crane inside the temple, perhaps mounted on a mound of earth and stone, so that they could build up a platform halfway up the temple to give them the leverage they would need to reach right to the top. Unlike earlier civilizations, Gersafron's craftsmen had iron tools. This enabled the marble columns to be fluted and decorated, but it called for greater care in handling them. One of the great difficulties of manoeuvring these enormous blocks of stone is the precision that you need to get them finally into their exact place in the building. And you want techniques that can allow fine-tuning and allow little shifts of position and so on. Persephone had to ensure the 40-ton marble lintels were placed in exactly the right positions, or the whole temple could collapse like a house of cards. He contemplated suicide when faced with lowering the final section. A similar problem had once confronted the ancient Egyptians when lowering a 60-ton sarcophagus down a 30-meter shaft. Their solution was simple. They fill the shaft with sand, and they put the sarcophagus above the sand, and they cut a side shaft. 